Good morning, dear colleagues, and welcome to the side events on the margin of the 60th session of the Commission for Social Development. Kindly organized by the Permanent Mission of Portugal, the Delegation of the European Union to the United Nations, the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, and the Office of the Secretary General's and Voting Youth. My name is Jose Joaquin Mejia, and as a Mexican youth delegate, it's an honor to be moderating today with the German youth delegate, Franca Gutner. Hello, everyone. Nice to have you all join us. With less than nine years to achieve SDG2 on zero hunger, there are several challenges that the world faces. Equitable access to food, social exclusion, and unsustainable production practices are placed as some of the main ones, being necessary to trigger transformation within agri-food and social system through, a, through an expansion of natural-based solution and a circular economy approaches. Therefore, we create this meeting space that considers the innovative vision of youth. To kick off our event entitled The Role of Youth in Tackling Poverty and Hunger at Local, Regional, and International Level, it's our pleasure to introduce the head of the European Union delegation, His Excellency Ambassador Olof Skoop, for his opening remarks. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you very much uh, uh, and good morning uh, everyone uh, from uh, New York. Uh, I know that uh, many may be joining from other parts of the world, so good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are. Um, and I want to thank you uh, to both you, Jose Joaquin and Franca, for uh, your uh, uh, in being in charge of our conversation today. I promise I will be um, uh, very brief. Uh, this is not about us speaking um, the usual voices. This is about listening to youth. Um, but I wanted to uh, first just thank also the UN um, uh, Department of Economic and Social Affairs, the Office of the Secretary General's Envoy for on Youth, and also Portugal, who is uh, co-hosting this uh, with us um, today. Um, colleagues, um, you should be aware that um, in the UN, um, the EU really stands up for opening up our deliberations to uh, a, a younger generation, to civil society, etc. And I have to be very open with you and say that there is a certain pushback. Um, some countries always remind us that the UN is a body of governments coming together. And that is true when it comes to decision making. But I think it's extremely important that the voices of our next generation and the future are being uh, entered into our, our deliberations, because in essence, everything we do here is about um, creating a future which is sustainable and dignified for everyone uh, growing up right now and who will be born uh, later. Um, I think the European Union is trying to do not just, you know, speaking about this, but actually trying to implement policies at home that uh, supports youth in, in various ways. We have trying to give opportunities of employment, apprenticeship, training or education, preparing uh, our younger generation for a, a modern uh, economy, including that has to be green and digital. Um, we have something called the EU Youth Guarantee um, in, in the European Union, which ensures that all young people under the age of 30 receive a good quality offer of employment, um, a continued ed education, an apprenticeship or traineeship within a period of four months uh, of becoming unemployed or, or uh, leaving uh, education. Um, and we have designated 2022 as a European Year of Youth. Um, I hope that um, this will be not just for European youth, but it will be something that will, uh, you know, be felt by youth all over, including in the UN context, uh, of being uh, better heard and, and have better access to the work we do. Uh, only uh, as late as yesterday, we began a conversation here at the UN on the Secretary General's Our Common Agenda. Um, and uh, two very significant events that are being planned uh, is a transform transformational education summit later this year, focusing on education, and then a big, uh, I think very important summit on the future um, in 2023. Uh, and it would be, you know, uh, the most logical thing in the world that we create space for uh, uh, youth to be part of the conversation heading, leading up and preparing and, uh, you know, during those two events uh, as well. 
But today's theme is very, very much about the uh, uh, Commission on Social Development, um, including to fight uh, poverty and, and hunger. So I, um, I just uh, finished right here and, um, and leave the floor to our uh, younger generation. Thank you very much again for being part of this conversation. Thank you very much, Sansi. Uh, as part of the objectives of this event, the review and formulation of recommendations and the sharing of best practices are contemplated, considering young people as a central pillar in the transformation to be achieved. Hence, our program includes two segments, beginning with an introductory, introduction remarks from invited speakers and followed by interventions from the youth delegates. Regarding this, we are delighted to move on to the high-level segment, starting with Mr. Leo Chenin, under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, the floor is all yours. Good morning to everybody. Um, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I, let me start by thanking the co-organizers uh, for organizing this event. I'm pleased to see so many youth delegates participating in today's side event of the Commission for Social Development. You are active, as Ambassador School has mentioned, this is an event for the youth delegates. So we are just coming to join you and supporting you for this event. Uh, your active engagement is very important given the priority theme of the commission this year. As you know, the commission is focused on inclusive and resilient recovery from COVID-19 for sustainable livelihoods, well-being, and dignity for all eradicating poverty and the hunger in all its forms and dimensions to achieve the 2030 agenda. The work of youth in this context is crucial, not only as representing the voice of the future, but also given the vast challenges that young people face today. I'm always joking that be, although the youth, they are not vulnerable groups, but they are confronting actual unique challenges and difficulties in today's world. Over the last decade, young people's participation in the work of the United Nations has flourished. The UN strongly supports meaningful youth engagement, youth development, and participation, which can be seen not only within the UN entities, but also in the work of member states and the intergovernmental bodies across the UN system. Moreover, the increased commitment toward use is evident in the priorities reflected in 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, including in several of the targets and the indicators. It is also evident in the work of the Security Council in the area of use, peace, and security. The growing focus on use is also reflected in the increasing number of member states sending use delegates, such as yourselves, to the United Nations to be included in the important discussions. Young people have noted, for example, the critical social dimensions of the transformation of food systems. The Department of Economic and Social Affairs, UNDESA, continues to highlight these important contributions, including through the 2021 International Youth Day this past summer. The Youth Day underscored youth innovative solutions as a contribution to the transformation of food systems while addressing human and planetary health. Such synergies are critical to ensuring implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Dear colleagues, based on the world population projection by DESA, the world population are expected to increase by 2 billion people in the next 30 years. Simply producing large volume of food will not ensure our well being. There is a need to address rural poverty, malnutrition, chronic diseases, farmers' rights, gender equality, social inclusion, and the climate, uh, and the climate crisis. These are all interlinked in the creation of sustainable food system. The COVID 19 pandemic has also exposed more clearly and the 
the challenges and inequality today's young people have been facing for, for too long. A youth delegate, you are part of important intergovernment processes, including in this year's priority theme in the Commission for Social Development, and in how youth contribute to strengthening multilateralism to deliver well-being and dignity for all. Youth have also recognized that innovations can advance the 2030 agenda and reduce inequalities, particularly those that have come to light during the COVID-19 pandemic. The UN can be a platform to address common issues in, in an equitable manner. I use delegates, you provide a key connection between the United Nations and the youth in your home countries. You can make an impact by taking action back home through partnerships with the youth, with, with your youth structures, governments, and other civil society organizations. Above all, you are young leaders working towards addressing and solving pressing issues. I wish to reiterate that you have just as full support in your endeavors as youth delegates. I wish you a successful session. I thank you. Thank you. So back to moderators. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, moving forward, we're now joined by Her Excellency Maria del Carmen Esquer, permanent representative of Argentina and chair of the Commission for Social Development. Thank you. Thank you, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues and friends. Let me start by congratulating Ambassador Francisco Duarte Lopez and uh, Olof Skog, the Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, and uh, uh, Mr. Liu Senim, Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs of the United Nations, DESA, for organizing this important event and for inviting me to participate in this very interesting panel discussion. As chair of the Commission for Social Development, it is an honor to be here among such distinguished speakers and outstanding youth representatives to engage in a substantive debate on the role of the youth in tackling poverty and hunger at local, regional, and international level. In order to truly leave no one behind, we must address all the dimensions of development, economic, social, and environmental dimensions. Young persons have a very important role to play in fighting against poverty and hunger, climate change, gender equality, and many other challenges we face ahead. But governments, governments have a crucial responsibility to guarantee the full realization of their human rights. The problem is not that the world does not produce food, but the lack of equitable access to food, social exclusion, and multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination. This is the problem. These inequalities must be urgently addressed to advance a more resilient, inclusive, and sustainable world. The COVID-19 pandemic has posed unprecedented challenges to the human rights, social development, and well-being of people worldwide, and particularly young persons who have seen their life and aspiration deeply affected by increasing poverty and the exacerbation of pre-existing inequalities. In his last report, the Secretary General highlighted the global hour work it in 2021 will be 4.3% 4, 4 below pre-pandemic level, equivalent to the loss of 125 million full-time shops. And he also stressed that these increased levels of inactivity and unemployment are particularly affected young persons, especially young women. The pandemic has also revealed the importance of having present state 
that place people, especially those that are behind left at the center of their actions. However, young persons are not merely a target group for development, but also initiators, participants, decision makers, and leaders. Young persons are a powerful driving force of change, but they need a state and the international community that give them tools and empower them to take the lead. In this regard, I would like to share some good practices that are being implemented in my country, Argentina, to foster youth participation. The National Program for Citizen Participation of Children and Adolescents, the Consultative Council for Adolescents, and the Multisectorial Council of Youth are mechanisms that institutionalize the right to participation of all young persons and provide them with a platform for their full participation in the design, implementation, and evaluation of the public policies that concern them. Let me finish by conveying this message to the new generation. Keep on engaging and speak, speak up for your rights. You inspire, inspire change. You are entrepreneurs, activists, and community leaders. It is your future we are building now, and you have the right to play a role in shaping the world you will be living in. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency. We are grateful to hear your comments. And uh, now I give, the, I give the floor to the Chief Economist in the Food and Agricultural Organization, Mr. Maximo Torero Cullen. Thank you, thank you very much. And, and thank you very much uh, for the kind invitation, Excellencies. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, at present, uh, almost 88% of the world's 1.2 billion youth live in developing countries. And globally, young people account for approximately 24% of the working poor. Let me repeat, 24% of the working poor. In 2019, before COVID-19 pandemic, around one fifth of the world youth were not employed. They don't have access to education or training with young women outnumbering young men two to one. Furthermore, youth unemployment rates were three times as high as those of adults. The COVID-19 crisis has exacerbated this already alarming situation and in intensifies youth and unemployment rates, their labor market vulnerabilities, and of course, exacerbates even more the levels of inequalities we have. So my dear friends, you are a consequence of our policy failure. We have failed and we need to change this. But you are at the same time an opportunity and the future energy of growth. With most young people living in developing countries where agriculture is providing the main source of income, it is vital that they stay connected with the sector. Youth are already involved, but there is room for a lot more. As recently noted in a report by the Committee on World Food Security, youth are on the front lines to build the food systems of the future. As I said before, they play a crucial role in the rural sectors and in the agricultural sector. But this is not to transfer to you the responsibility. You should not be alone and you are not alone. We need to work together and we need to help you to resolve our policy failure. We need to assess the past. We need to look at what mistakes were done and we need to look at where we work well, where we had successes and not let yourself involved in our existing bureaucracies. Keep your flexibility and always work based on evidence-based recommendations. That is central to have evidence on what you propose on what you do and try to bring science as much as possible to the decisions and the way you want to move forward. The challenges are, are enormous. I don't want to bring all the numbers of food insecurity that we have today, but we clearly need innovation, 
We need thinking out of the box. We need to be disruptive to the traditional systems which have not worked. And we need to transform by all these means our existing agri-food systems, which no matter how resilient they have shown to be during the COVID-19 crisis, still we are not able to move people out of hunger and poverty as we should be doing. What distinguishes this new generation of youth in the, in the youth in agriculture is the use of technology and innovation. New perspectives and an eagerness to learn and apply their knowledge to foster change in their communities. But we also need to help to build the skills that are required. The world is evolving very fast. The digitalization automation is moving extremely fast. And the challenge we are facing now because of the closure of schools across all developing countries is tremendous. So we need to work together to build those skill sets so that we can have the human capital that is needed. FAO is highly committed to support young people and jointly work with them to place them at the center of the rural transformation. In 2019, we created the Youth Committee, which I have the honor to share, to tap into the potential of young employees and finding a new and innovative ways of connecting young and youthful colleagues inside FAO. It's youth and youthfulness. So not necessarily you have to be young in age. Last year, FAO also introduced the youth as a cross-cutting theme in the 2022-2031 strategic framework to promote more systematic mainstreaming and no personalization of the youth-related issues in organization programs priority areas. And finally, in 2021, we also facilitate the launch of the movement that we call World Food Forum to foster youth-led engagement and action in support of agri-food system transformation. And I really invite you to join this movement. It's a movement of change where we all work together. Investing further in young people can yield substantial results in terms of poverty reduction, employment generation, food and nutrition security, and overall rural transformation helping achieve the transformation to more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems for better production, better nutrition, better environment, and better life, leaving no one behind. I look forward to hearing your ideas today. And let's please move forward and work together to achieve the 2030 agenda. A big change is needed, and youthfulness and youth need to be at the core of this. So let's work together to achieve this. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, finally, Ms. Hayat Magu from Anayaki, Secretary General of Samboyan Youth, will share through a video a uh, few words with us to close this section. Excellencies, dear colleagues, UN Youth Delegates and fellow young people, I'm honored to join you today and I thank the delegations of Portugal and the European Union, as well as DESA and my office for bringing us together. In my role as the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, I have heard repeatedly from young people around the world and in all their diversity that concerning poverty and hunger, we urgently need to support healthy and sustainable consumption patterns, ensure that everyone has access to safe and nutritious food, and create a food system which is resilient to shocks and stresses from climate change, disasters, and conflicts. These demands were listed in the Youth Declaration on Food Systems Transformation delivered by young people at the UN Food Systems Summit in September last year. Data from the impact of COVID-19 shows that young people are particularly susceptible to food insecurity and increased risk of poverty. The socioeconomic health and development impacts of unsustainable food systems and malnutrition are persistent for young people, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. Young people's lives, livelihoods, and futures depend on building forward better from current crises, including the climate crisis. For that, more sustainable global food systems are pivotal. Young people's role in averting poverty and hunger is to leverage technology, innovation, and lived experiences to drive systems transformation at every level. However, they need the support of governments to adopt and bring their solutions to scale while being involved in every step of the way. For example, there is an enormous potential for food systems to help 
fight poverty by eliminating generational inequalities in access to resources through the provision of decent work for young people. In addition, governments need to re-envision agricultural policies to reflect food system models that integrate intergenerational equity and accessibility of land, training, finance, as well as decision-making power for young people. Young people, despite all these challenges, are already playing their part. An example is Jose from Peru, who pioneered a bank in which the main currency is recyclable waste, allowing people who are otherwise excluded from financial systems to earn credit to trade for goods and services in their communities. Another example is the youth-led movement hashtag Act for Food, which brings together young people from Mauritania, Bangladesh, Ireland and Fiji, to name a few, aiming to inspire action to combat hunger, improve health and heal the planet. In order to effectively tackle poverty and hunger at all levels, meaningful, diverse and effective youth engagement is key, including in intergovernmental spaces like the UN. I applaud member states that have established UN youth delegate programs, many of whom are here today. As a UN youth delegate, you are particularly well positioned to push for positive transformational change within your countries and at the global level. I stand ready to support you and everyone here today in this endeavor. I wish you a fruitful meeting ahead. Thank you. Now we would like to start with our second segment of our event, which be moderated by my colleague Franca. Thank you so much, Jose. While we produce more food than ever before, the goal of a world with zero hunger remains hugely challenging due to the toxic cocktail of conflict, climate change, structural poverty, and as Ambassador Maria del Carmen Squeff already mentioned, inequality. It is really hard to miss, for example, that the gap between the really poor and really rich has increased during the last two years of the COVID pandemic. Youth makes up over 40% of the world's population. If the sustainable development goals are to be achieved, government, civil society, and international partners must work together with us and include our ideas and creativity. We now want to give space to youth directly to give them the chance to express themselves and to bring in their demands and their perspective of what is really needed to create positive change from their side. We will start with the youth delegates from Peru, Alicia Maldonado and David Martinez, followed by the youth delegates from Georgia. In the meantime, all listeners and participants are, can write their questions to the distinguished speakers into the chat box, and we will be able to ask them at the end. So use this opportunity and I will hand over to Alicia and David now. Good morning everyone, it's a pleasure to share the floor with you. Your Excellencies, you and personal, dear your delegates. In the city of Lima, there is a hill. The richest people in the country live on one side of it. On the other side, several families live in poverty. On this side, families struggle to have something to eat day by day. They have developed what it's called in Spanish, Ollas Comunes, which is an initiative of women. Many of them, young mothers that cook meals for their communities. They can feed up 200, 300 people. The government has been developing policies to support these initiatives replicated in many poor cities. However, the roots of the problem persist. Both realities are side by side on the same hill. And it's an example of what's happening on a bigger scale in the world. The right to food has been turned into an unsustainable business by big industries and powerful countries. In the world we live in, it is preferred to waste rather than to redistribute. The prevailing system prioritizes economic growth but not necessarily development and well-being. This can risk human lives and environment for the sake of making profits. There is enough food to feed all the humans on Earth, but the world leaders have other priorities, such as allocating more funds to military activities rather than aiding the development of the Global South. Moreover, they are failing to deliver robust action against climate change. 
The capacity to distribute the food equitably hasn't been developed yet, and it seems it is also not a priority. So what can the youth do to tackle hunger and poverty? Taking a chair and sitting at a table with the policymakers to make their voices heard. Right now, we are facing a global climate crisis that is pushing people into poverty and hunger. At this moment, there are kids starving because of droughts in their countries, which have almost no responsibility for greenhouse gas emissions. Policies need to be developed in order to limit the excess food that a country can have and guarantee the redistribution of the products of agriculture, first to the country that produced it, and then to export it. There is no time for false promises, greenwashing, or tokenism. This is an urgent call to, quoting youth climate activists, uproot the system. The roots are the unequal distribution of power in the world, where the West and the global North are crowding the greatest quantity of resources. The true solution is redistribution of resources. Young people are willing to challenge the status quo. Are world leaders going to listen to us? Thank you. Thank you so much, Alicia and David, for shedding a light on global inequality and the problem of equal food distribution. I will now hand over to Nino Gogocia, which will be followed by the Israeli youth delegates. Dear honorable delegates, we all know that every third child in a low and middle income country suffers from chronic undernutrition. As a result, without a sustainable source of income at a sufficient level, Young children and their families don't have access to nutritious food, clean water, or health care. From the perspective of the middle-income country of Georgia, I believe and consider human capital to be a key factor for achieving sustainable development and improving the welfare of the whole society. Despite the progress made by my country for the past recent years, one-fifth of the total population still lives below the national poverty line. Therefore, more active economic and social policy is needed to decrease the population living below $1.9 per day to less than 1% by 2030. The wide gap between different income groups of the population still persists in Georgia. The country aims to narrow existing socioeconomic gaps between different income groups by accelerating income growth. The government of Georgia has enacted a number of subsectoral policies to support the sustainability and competitiveness of the agricultural sector, including through the Produce in Georgia program. The country has now approved a long-term policy document, Agricultural and Rural Development Strategy for 2021-2027. Its three main cornerstones are, first, increased competitiveness, second, sustainable use of natural resources, maintenance of ecosystems and climate adaptation, and thir third, effectiveness of food safety systems in all agricultural sectors. Unfortunately, Russia's occupation and effective control of Georgia's regions of Abkhazia and Tsinvali, which has been clearly attested by the 21st January 2021 ruling of the European Court of Human Rights, prevents the government from the possibility to share the benefits of sustainable development with the conflict-affected people in the Russia-occupied Georgian regions who is no international human rights mechanisms on the ground, are daily subjected to the grave violations of their fundamental rights, including right to life and health. The role of youth in tackling poverty and hunger is essential. We no longer have to be just reactive, but we need to be proactive while striving to build a better world. As peak youth, we need to acknowledge each individual's power, the importance of volunteers, collaboration, and innovations, we need a more entrepreneurial mindset to turn agriculture into a mechanism which can provide quality service for society. We need to tackle poverty together as one. Pick use. I thank you. Thank you very much, Nino. I will now hand over the floor to Talia Pore and Tom Levy for their statement. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Talia Pore. And my name is Tom Levy. When reading the UN SDGs and the goals we committed ourselves to as a global community, it is clear that poverty and hunger are not simply the topic of goals one and two, but are intertwined with other SDGs such as responsible, responsible production and consumption and combating the, the climate crisis. As young people, we are taught that in order to change something, you must first understand the why. As of today, we know the current challenges we face in feeding and providing basic conditions stems from the following. World population. 
is strongly growing urbanized, which means we have more people to feed with growing need for safe and clean food. Today, standard agriculture methods are not enough to supply it without depleting natural resources and causing severe environmental damage. Second, climate change. As we all know, temperatures are rising and expanding the desert area of the world. This climate change has made the weather more violent and less predictable, making agriculture even more difficult for planning, our crops for storage and durability for those unstable weather conditions. Third, the lack of natural resources. As we said before, with the growing population, we are losing lands, clean water, and other ecological systems. We believe all those goals are wicked problems that a part of their solution lie in educating the world communities where we should put our efforts. We live in a time of unexpected innovation and unpredicted challenges. The, the determining factor of this decade will be our ability to direct our collective impact towards solving massive global problems. And the agri-food sector certainly is, is it with a fair share of sustainable problems. The task of feeding 10 billion people by 2050 sustainably and affordably without the imp implements of climate change is enough of a challenge on its own. Couple this challenge with the changing weather events, decreased soil quality and yield predictability, and the scale of this challenge is something that is truly difficult to get in your head around. The good news is that the primarily tool required to solve these challenges is commonly available across the globe, collaboration and technology. In simple words, the challenge is to produce enough nutritious food to the world's growing population while having reduced natural resources and an overpopulated globe. As young people, we believe that innovation is the key. Creating a better, healthier future can be achieved through involved and educated youth who embrace technology and keep a people-centered approach when creating solutions. We see hope in the Israeli food tech industry that is dramatically growing each year largely due to our startup mindset, implementation of technologies from separated fields, and bringing a fresh new kind of innovation, aim of tackling the barriers of the global food industry now. We would like to end with the words of Ms. Amina Muhammad, Deputy Secretary General to the UN. We have to change the premise on which investment decisions are made so that they are in the best interest of humanity, not money markets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom and Talia, for this inspirational speech on innovation as a tool for tackling the climate crisis and hunger. I will now hand over the, to the Ukrainian youth delegates, Denise Gansha and Alina Kuska. Thank you. And they will be followed by the youth delegate from Panama. Dear distinguished guests, as Ukrainian youth delegates to the United Nations, we are committed to achieving SDG goals, in particular goal one, no poverty, and goal two, zero hunger, and believe that youth must play an important role in this process. According to the UN estimates, young people make up almost 16% of the world population. Young generation constitute a great part of climate activists, human rights advocates, and NGO leaders who can play a leading role in raising awareness of poverty and hunger issues, monitoring the situation in their respective countries, and providing relevant data analysis, which may further help in shaping the right national strategies and coming up with viable action plans. Reduction of poverty comes in line with education and investments in human capital. More educated youth is better prepared for the future and thus can significantly contribute to accomplishing no poverty goal. Alternatively, lack of policies aimed at advancing youth education, namely among the vulnerable groups, will be extremely costly to reverse both for the young people and for society. Ukraine is not staying away from the problem of poverty and hunger. Right now, many NGOs are working closely with UNDP in Ukraine to support sustainable solutions in the tackling poverty and hunger. So the further steps could be the larger engagement of youth in the process, as well as creation of the programs aimed at supporting young inventors and providing them with the resources needed to bring their innovative ideas to life. In addition, special projects should target youth in the rural areas, promoting learning opportunities and practical knowledge in farming and agricultural activities. Such initiatives may have a great impact on improving the welfare of rural communities. At the global scale, young people are also having a stake in shaping sustainable food systems. 
According to the UN report on youth and agriculture, agri-food systems became a large provider of jobs for young people, particularly in the global south. However, the industry does not provide decent work or adequate income opportunities, which reduces the appeal for youth and leaves a large reservoir of jobs unused. At the same time, the national and international efforts to ensure a larger engagement of youth in sustainable agri-food systems may become a prerequisite for the drastic transformation of agri-food systems and step up in achieving SDG goals. It is high time that governments, international organizations, NGOs, and youth representatives work together across sustainable food system, inequalities, poverty, education for all, and other accompanying problems to pave the way for a better future. Thank you so much, Alina and Denise. I will now hand over to Flor Flores from Panama, which will be followed by the Sovereign Order of Malta. Good morning, colleagues, ambassadors, and attendees. Today, I'm probably talking as the youngest person in my delegation who have been given the opportunity to be involved in different topics of the United Nations agenda of development, human rights, sustainability, gender, equality, and many others. In the face of challenges facing the world, we as young, as young people have the responsibility to take opportunities to transform them into something we can fight for and advocate for. And in order to tackle poverty and hunger, we need to be seated in the table. We need to be part of the decision making. In Panama, the population between 15 and 29 years old represents 25 of the population, which means that in one in every four Panamanians is a young person in, in this age group. The exclusion of young people from decision-making not only fosters poverty, but also strengthens the creation of new conflicts or its deepening. According to the United Nations Office of the of Population Fund in Panama, with this generational group that I mentioned before, the country could achieve a robust economy base, which could help reverse intergenerational poverty in short and medium term. To tackle poverty and hunger in all level, we as youth need to reinvent what we have been doing the same way for decades. However, for that to happen, youth must be educated, healthy, and safe. And I can say with certainty that Panama continues to work strengthening the actions to involve, to involve youth in decision-making, bringing us closer to the 2030 agenda through national strategic plans aligned with the SDG, but we still have a huge challenge ahead. Following that commitment with youth last year, President Laurentino Cortizo Cohen led a participatory process of public consultation, which purpose was to obtain the inputs for the drafting of the 2022-2027 youth public policy document to then present a preliminary draft for a future youth law. The process was coordinated by the Ministry of Social Development together with the United Nations Development Program, government partners and other youth organizations. It included 24 face-to-face -face and five virtual consultations in our 10 provinces and four comarcas, with the participation of, of more than 1,800 young people. The crisis we face can leave our countries behind of, on youth issues. The pandemic, yes, is a crisis, but it is, it is also an opportunity. And I can probably say that thousands of young people have been part of the response of providing protections during the pandemic from volunteers, medical teams, to innovation, digitalization. For example, Panama Solidario was the response of national government to warranty food protection and efficient response during the crisis, such as Vale Digital that was awarded for the excellence of the electronic government network of Latin America and the Caribbean organized by the, organ by the Organization of American State and the Development Bank in this category of digital government against COVID-19. This is also the fight, the fight against poverty and hunger. Reports from the Economy Commission of Latin America and the Caribbean and the FAO shows that despite the pandemic, extreme poverty will be reduced in Panama and hunger will be prevented from increasing. And this would not have been possible without Panama Solidarity. Panama keeps working on different intergovernmental programs in order to reduce inequality, poverty, and hunger. Young people are depressing, we are depressing, and our delegation is not only aware of this, but is also working to give our population the necessary tools, both labor and interpersonal tools for the common of good of multilateral system. This is, must, this is and must be the commitment of all states to warranty a 
healthy, educated, and safe youth, which turns present and future generations into actors to tackle against poverty and inequality at the local, regional, and international level. Thank you. Thank you so much, Flo, for also pointing out that everybody has to work together to reach those goals. I will now hand over to Daniel Blanco, who will be followed by the youth delegates from the European Union, who will have a joint statement. Excellencies, uh, dear colleagues and friends, it is a great pleasure for me to address you today on behalf of the Sovereign Order of Malta mission uh, to the United Nations. I really appreciate this opportunity to share with you some thoughts. So thank you again for the invitation. We as young people are not only willing, we are also able to assume our share of responsibility in addressing the most crucial global challenges, starting with climate change and continuing with human rights violations, inequalities, all forms of discrimination, peace and security threats, diseases and humanitarian crises, just to mention the most pressing ones. Uh, tackling poverty and hunger is at the core of the 2030 Agenda, represented by SDG 1 and SDG 2. They are the basic precondition for development and socioeconomic progress. Yet, we have not been able to make sufficient progress even on these two fundamental issues. It is very frustrating. And as we know, the pandemic has complicated it even further. How can people still be hungry in a world of plentiful food? The root causes are in all those other categories and other challenges that I have mentioned. We need to use the current decade of action initiated by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohamed as a catalyst of the key overarching principle of the 2030 Agenda implementation, leave no one behind. Hunger is at the heart of extreme poverty. The importance of this relationship was stressed already in the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs, but it seems that we have not learned those lessons well. According to the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, there is a need to improve agricultural productivity and incomes, plus promote better nutritional practices at all levels, plus enhance direct and immediate access to food by the neediest. From the youth perspective, I believe we need to assist the decision makers as well as practitioners on many levels. First, by being part of the practical solutions that all the relevant actors have. As clearly shown during the pandemic, cities and municipalities are first responders and providers of important services for the people. Let me share uh, with you three quick appeals as an, as an impulse for further action by the UN leadership to UN member states. All of them start by the letter R. The first one would be resilience, second one would be resolve, and the last one would be responsibility. Yes, resilience and resolve need to be complemented uh, by responsibility on all levels, starting with our leaders who should think more as statesmen and less as politicians. Rather than thinking of the next election, they need to think about the next generations. We need credibility, professionalism, and responsibility. Lastly, the Sovereign Order of Malta would like to highlight the crucial importance of the September 2021 report of UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres entitled Our Common Agenda. As you know, a lot of attention in it has been paid to youth and future generations, as well as to global goods, global governance, and its increased role of local and regional authorities, including our cities. And rightly so, let's encourage Secretary General Guterres to be bold in its implementation in the first year of his second mandate. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Daniel, for highlighting the importance of resilience, resource, and responsibility. I will now hand over to the youth delegate from Ireland, Diandrani Bukala, and the youth delegate from Hungary, Domokos Kovac, who will hold a statement on behalf of the European Union. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that I will not be the only one to vividly remember images of Malheur's children as some of my earliest childhood memories. Some of you will have experienced these living conditions, if they can be called that, which are still ongoing 20 years later, and which are even worse due to climate change, conflict, and sexual and gender-based violence. I hope that we all realize that none of us are immune from poverty and hunger, ever. It is no coincidence that the eradication of poverty and hunger are the first two SDGs. 
due to their intersection and interdependence with our 15 other goals, unless we achieve food security and zero poverty, we cannot achieve the rest. But we all already know the devastating impact that we are currently having on our planet, never mind if we do not meet the 2030 targets. Sustainable and meaningful youth participation is terminology that we hear frequently. Such participation does not involve creating a space for youth to organize amongst themselves. It involves recognizing the value, innovation and determination of youth and simply giving us a seat in what already exists. All of us here today have the collective power to shape the personal histories of future generations to ensure that this conversation is not still ongoing in another 20 years. Do you ever imagine what you could have achieved if you had just started something earlier? That feeling is why we cannot continue to have the youth voice as anything but integral to our decision-making processes. Honorable guests, decision makers, fellow youth delegates, I am honored to address our side event in the name of the member states of the European Union as a youth delegate of Hungary to the United Nations. I will try to answer the question of our side event, what's the rule of youth on local, regional and international level related to this issue? On local level, young people can avoid to produce more food waste, to promote a more circular society and give food to them who are in need. On regional level, the European Union has a great possibility to export great initiatives to other states of our world, so we can avoid to waste more food and have food for them who are in need. For example, my country started initiatives with digitalization, so that's why I'm happy that we can help to other states of the world. And on international level, we as youth delegate have a possibility to connect. That's why I'm very happy that we joined together this side event with the youth delegate of Austria, Miriam Egger, to the United Nations, and Enrico Gostom, the youth delegate of Hungary to the European Union. In the next days, we will implement an education project here in Passau, which is a city in Germany, and we will educate the Hungarian community because rivers connect us. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Domokos and Deandra. I will now hand over to the youth delegate from Mexico, Angela Mundria. And after this, there will be a statement by the youth delegates from Guyana. Thank you. Thank you very much, Franca. Good morning, distinguished excellencies and fellow youth delegates. It is an honor to join you at this important side event on the role of youth in tackling poverty and hunger on the margins of the 60th session of the Commission for Social Development. Under these unprecedented times, the COVID-19 pandemic has pushed more than 100 million people into poverty. The, ach the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is completely at risk. SDGs 1 and 2 on eradication of poverty and hunger are particularly necessary. We must ensure that policies and actions are on track to achieve these two important goals. Young people can play a significant role in fighting these problems. Oftentimes, we are at the center of movements in favor of sustainable solutions. World's youth must continue developing and supporting initiatives to eradicate poverty and hunger. We can do a lot by supporting food assistance, collaborating with scientific initiatives, as many panelists have addressed, and developing projects against climate change, and especially in this panel, food insecurity. We should also engage with our governments, because together we can get further. For instance, the program Youth Building the Future, implemented by the government of Mexico, aims to establish connections between young people with companies, workshops, institutions, or businesses where they can develop or strengthen work skills and technical competences. During these trainings, participants receive a monthly cash deposit. In addition, the program Sewing Life addresses rural poverty and environmental degradation by providing in-kind support to agroforestry production to persons as young as 18 years. These programs are clear examples of governmental initiatives that involve youth participation to tackle poverty and hunger. However, current challenges require significant cooperation among countries in our region. Mexico has also promoted these two programs so that countries like El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras can replicate them. This has also proven to be a success in addressing the lack of employment opportunities as a root cause for migration. 
In sum, youth are indispensable agents for social progress and development. It is us who will face the impact of unsustainable policies that take place today. Therefore, it is crucial that we engage closely with policymakers so that our perspectives can guide them better. We call on all member states to take into consideration the voices of the youth and to allow for their participation in decision making. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angel. I will now hand over to Nikosia Jukit and Sarah Daranjac. I think you are still muted, so if you are able to. We cannot hear you, unfortunately. Maybe you want to try to uh, fix your microphone and until then I will ask the questions that we received in the chat to, to our speakers. So the first question that we received was to His Excellency, the Under Secretary General, Daniela Bass. Mrs. Bass, the Commission of Social Development is one of the main platforms where youth voices are part of the main deliberation of the Commission. Do you foresee participation of youth increasing in, at the UN? Thank you very much. And I, I, I hope that uh, what you said is a wish for my future career. I'm here representing the Under Secretary General of DESA. I'm the Director of the Division for Inclusive Social Development. <laughs> But thank you so much. Actually, you know, and, and I will answer your question. Um, when I started as a JPO back in 1986, uh, <clears throat> then I, I stayed at 10 years. I left the UN for 18 years and I came back in 2011 as director. Back in those years, um, I was a youth. I was your age. And, uh, and there was no space for us young people. And, but we were lucky because in 1981, uh, there were the very first time when governments mentioned the, the, the importance of youth to participate in uh, intergovernmental processes. And then finally, we youth, uh, although I'm still youthful, as the, the gentleman from FAO said, um, we succeeded in, uh, in supporting the endeavors of uh, civil society and governments, and we had uh, the world, uh, 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 the program of action on youth. Now, moving, go, going on and on and on, uh, I aged a teeny bit, uh, although in my mind I'm still kind of um, a rebel, allow me to say so, and that's actually what sometimes is needed to break uh, the rules and, and try to make things happen, you know, innovation, as you said. So in 2007, uh, governments uh, recognized in a General Assembly resolution the importance uh, of youth participating more and more in a more formal way. And uh, they mentioned the DESA, actually recognized the DESA as the um, space um, to support uh, the participation, uh, yes, the engagement, of course, but that's more in the office of the youth envoy to engage youth people. But then when it comes to participate to intergovernmental mechanisms where politics and policies and decisions are made, okay, that's where DESA, since it serves many intergovernmental bodies, was asked to make sure that youth really participates. And... Uh, it was created slowly, slowly, what it is nowadays called the United Nations Delegates Program. Uh, and this again in a resolution uh, and then by the Secretary General of the United Nations has been tasked to DESA. And so we had, uh, in terms of youth participation back in 2007, around um, less than, I think 28 youth delegates from 27 to nowadays, we have 70, 70 UN youth delegates participating. And we in DESA are very proud of this. When it comes to your question about the Commission for Social Development, well, being an intergovernmental body, and so DESA being tasked to uh, transfer our knowledge to youth delegates, um, um, 
we have, um, I think this year, 30 youth delegates present at the commission. Now, this is an example, Commission for Social Development. This is an example of uh, how uh, through the commission, but not only, all intergovernmental bodies uh, will see and are seen and increase the number of youth. Um, and my plea to you, uh, uh, sorry if I take this liberty, is that as a youth delegates, you are representing your governments, where civil society is very important, but your role here as a delegate, young, but you are a delegate, you're representing your government. So please uh, make sure that as delegates who are young in age, but you are a delegate of a government, you take care of all people of all ages and of all abilities or disabilities. So if you will be engaged on all issues, not only on issues related to youth, on all issues as delegates who are young, yes, but you are delegates, then your participation in the commission that deals, for instance, with employment, um, dignified work, inclusion, participation, poverty, older persons, persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, et cetera, then if you start being engaged in all these aspects of the work, not necessarily related to youth, then your presence in the commission, but in all intergovernmental bodies will increase because you will be talking about as leaders, young, but leaders, about issues that really tackle the needs of all a population, the world and the planet. And when it comes to poverty, and rural areas and food, please keep in mind that um, we have to find formulas to engage youth to remain in rural areas, to stay there. And what, what can bring young people and what can motivate young people to stay in, in, in rural areas and work in their agriculture, would you? Now, and if you don't feel like that, wonder and ask yourselves, why not? Maybe there is the need to have not only digital infrastructures, but other infrastructures to keep young people in rural areas and motivate them to stay in rural areas. Transportation, health, education, and fun, recreational activities as well. That's also part of life. So as delegates, I'm, I see that your participation in the commission and in all intergovernmental bodies will definitely increase if you focus your energies on the needs and, and the well-being of all people, of all ages and of all abilities. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Best, for encouraging us to push the boundaries. I hope that we will have a lot of events together and I can address you correctly the next time. I will now give the youth delegates from Guyana again the chance to hold their statement. And yeah, thank you. Poverty and hunger are long-standing battles that cannot be won overnight, but demand the effort, time, awareness, and participation of everyone, especially the youth. Poverty manifests in different ways, such as food insecurity leading to hunger, lack of access to health care and quality education, violence and abuse, and gender inequality. An educated, skilled, and empowered youth population can make greater contributions to country and community. Doors are opened for better job opportunities that allow for improved living standards for the individual and their family. In the world are fortunate to have the same access to education as their male counterparts, with an increasing number of girls pursuing studies in STEM. Even though this does not always translate into jobs and opportunities for leadership, constant advocacy is required in this regard. To ensure that the government addresses the specific needs of youth, more young people should be included in policy making and greater efforts made to incorporate their perspectives and ideas. I'm and I are part of the Young Democratic Program of the Ministry of Youth Service. Knowledge of various issues affecting Guyana's vulnerable population. We were 
trained in public speaking and communication techniques, as well as sensitized in areas of human rights, trafficking in persons, and gender stereotypes. We created Youth Unfiltered, a television and social media campaign that addresses pressing concerns of our youth population and highlights youth achievers and change makers chronicling their struggles. These experiences have shown us how inclusion and encouragement can empower young people to make positive changes. In relation to hunger, youths can play pivotal roles through messages and campaigns that sensitize persons about good nutrition, avoidance of food wastage, and the importance of helping those in need. In Guyana, young entrepreneurs have developed mobile apps that notify persons of discounts and excess food in grocery stores. This provides greater access to affordable food while helping owners to avoid food waste. Encouraging youth to pursue careers in the fields of agriculture and sustainable food production will contribute to food security. To summarize, poverty and hunger appear to be intractable challenges, but by combining basic approaches with contemporary technology and enlisting everyone's help, poverty and hunger can be eliminated. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah and Nikosi. We're glad that we got to hear that. Um, the technique was finally working. There was also a question to embed Sada Maria del Carmen Square. At the opening session of the commission, you presented the frame of a comic book, Mafalda. So youth was asking if in, if in the world poverty and hunger ended, what concrete su suggestions would you suggest to youth to really change the track towards eradicating of those plagues and that we finally have a world as in this comic book? It is about Mafalda, no? Yes. Thank you very much for this very interesting and so provoking question. As the opening session of the Commission for Social Development, uh, I decided this year and the last year to include Mafaldas because we need to listen to the young person voice. Mafalda is a young girl concerned about humanity, inequalities, and the world's peace, among many other issues. She represents the voice of younger generation that look critically at the present war while actively engaging to make a more equal, peaceful, and inclusive war. I encourage young person to stand up for their rights, to speak up and get engaged in the discussion of the issues that will shape the world in which they will be living in. But young person needs to have the tools to be able to participate and speak up their voice. They can be, can't be agent of change if they don't have equitable access to food and education. Governments have a big responsibility to guarantee that these rights are fully realized in order to give young person the essential tools and empower them to be active action of change. Thank you for the question and for really, I suggest to read Mafalda. Mafalda is translated in a lot of languages and it really is a, a very good learn about the what involucration of the younger person. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. We surely will. We have also one question to Mr. Max Torel Kallen, Chief Economist of the FIO. The question was that you mentioned quite a lot of committees. So youth asked how we can apply to participate in those committees. Is there a chance for us to, to join and to help? For sure. Uh, the most important one to join is the movement, which is the World Food Forum, which is led by, by youth. And to join is very simple. You just go to the World Food Forum FAO webpage. Uh, it's outside FAO, but you search World Food Forum FAO and it will appear and just register it. Now, the important thing here, and very briefly, is that this is a movement of change and is driven by youth, working together with all the other people that want to and consider themselves youthfulness, 
so that we can bring uh, innovation and change uh, to comply with the right to food, but not only right to food, but right to quality food. Uh, it's really important. We are doing the meeting again this year in the first week of October, so all of you are welcome to participate. And there is a youth assembly that proposes solutions like the one that was proposed on reduction of waste, where the youth can really play a serious role by just changing behavior of people, but also reduction of food losses, which is also central. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will now hand over to His Excellency Francisco Durato Lopez, the permanent representative of Portugal to the United Nations to present some closing remarks. Thank you very much, Franca. Um, it's um, a real pleasure to see youth delegates taking the lead in uh, this kind of, uh, of events. And I want to thank you all, all of you, uh, for, uh, for your commitment and for your participation. Uh, I also thank, of course, our co-hosts, the EU delegation, UN DESA, and the Office of the UN Boy. And uh, let me also um, commend um, my fellow colleagues, uh, including especially Ambassador of Argentina, Maria del Carmen um, Squeff, and all the panelists for their uh, insightful remarks and, uh, and replies to, to your questions. Um, a lot has already been said today. Uh, let me just highlight two, two, two notes, two points uh, at the end of our, of our event. First, that it's very clear that we must emerge from this crisis with a clear determination to recover better, to build back better. And therefore, we need to increase our investment in young people's capacities as we deliver the sustainable development goals. Second point, it is clear from today's discussions and other events where we, we, we have participated and we have um, heard um, the voices of, of youth more and more strong as Director Daniel Abbas has been uh, telling us over the years. Uh, and this is also very clear for us in the, in the permanent missions here at, uh, at the UN. It's very clear that we must focus on effective use co-participation mechanisms. Um, and uh, in collaboration with all of you in the framework of the implementation of the 2030 agenda. All this cannot be done without consulting use delegates um, and applying a rights-based approach to use policies. And through gathering expectations of regional use platforms and use delegates about their agenda and about their expectations. So thanks again to all of you and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much for those closing remarks. And thank you also again very much for supporting this event. I just saw that we received some resources in the chat of the FAO. We will share that with the other youth delegates so we can all join the preparations. Sadly, we have already arrived at the end of our event. From our side, we would like to thank the high-level speakers who took time out of their incredibly busy schedules to listen to the voices of youth today. And we would like to give a big thanks to all the youth delegates and activists who participated today. You made this event possible. Also from my side, thank you very much and goodbye. It was a pleasure.